Welcome to the 18th part of Spring Boot Kubernetes tutorial series. In this video, we are going to look at how we can dockerize Next.js UI application. In the previous video, we have seen what are the challenges dockerizing a front-end application. We have seen what are the challenges with plain React application and what are the additional challenges we will face uh, when dockerizing Next.js application. To recap the challenges with dockerizing a Next.js application quickly. Next.js performs two types of rendering. One is on the server-side rendering, one is the client-side rendering. When server-side rendering is happening, if there is any data needs to be fetched, it makes an API call to the API server. So this communication is between two containers within the Docker network. Whereas when client-side rendering happens and if you need to perform any API call, this will happen from host to Docker container. Okay. So this is why we need two different URLs and it is only in local Docker Compose based development environment. This won't be a problem in the production deployment because you will be having a logical domain for your API server. Then you could make uh, API call to the same uh, URL either from Docker container or from the local host itself. Now let us take a look at the Docker file we have for our Next.js UI application. Here, here is the Docker file. So here we are performing multi-stage build. We could do in a single stage uh, build, but the problem is as and when you change any uh, file, it's going to rebuild the whole uh, uh, Docker image again. Whereas while using this multi-stage build, a lot of these uh, steps are cached and only the necessary uh, stages will be rebuilt again. Okay, So let us take a look at uh, this Docker file here. And the first stage is, um, we are taking the node 16 alpha image as a base and then we are copying only a package json and yarn log file and then we are installing all the dependencies we are not copying any code or anything we are just taking the package json yarn log file and then installing the dependencies and then the second stage would be a builder uh, we give the alias as builder and here we are copying all the code from our local uh, machine to uh, this docker image and then we are also copying the node modules from the previous stage uh, which we aliased as dips so from the previous step we are copying all the node modules folder into our app working directory and then we are running the build so here it's going to use all the node modules uh, that it depends and then build the application here. In the next phase, which is the final uh, stage, we are aliasing it as a runner. And again, here we are specifying this is a production environment. And then instead of using the default root user, we are creating a uh, node.js group and then uh, creating a next.js user and then running with that user here. And before that, we are copying next.js, uh, next.config.js from the previous builder uh, stage. And also we are copying public and uh, we are changing the ownership to uh, next.js group and node.js uh, user. Sorry, I said the reverse way. Uh, node.js group and next.js user. And also, uh, I have copied uh, node.js modules from the previous builder phase and then finally copying this package JSON here. And we are exposing this 3000 because by default it is uh, running on 3000 and simply starting yarn start. So why do we need to run this in multiple phases? Uh, why not put in a single stage? The reason is Suppose if you are uh, usually the dependencies don't change quite often, you might uh, once your application uh, stabilizes, you don't uh, add new dependencies every day. So in that case, this stage will be cached and it doesn't have to rebuild the uh, again downloading all the dependencies and all that stuff. You don't have to do it. So this entire stage will be cached and it may start performing from this phase onwards. So like that, um, because of this multi-stage uh, approach, 
there is a good reason that your build will be much faster uh, because most of the times only your code gets changed and only uh, things get started from here because this uh, this phase is uh, cached okay so yeah basically we are starting it as a node process okay using node uh, 16 alpine image and when we go back to our docker compose app file just like our api we have defined one more service bookmarker ui next js and then we are giving a logical name to container and also we are specifying the build context which is in this folder and we specified the docker file uh, even if we don't specify it by default it is the docker file and uh, ports because our container is going to run on 3000 we are mapping it to 13000 and here is the interesting thing uh, we'll come back to it and then talk about uh, these two uh, urls if we go to api.ts file uh, which has these two functions to talk to the api and get the results so here as of now we simply hard coded what is the api base url which is nothing but uh, localhost 8080 but this needs to be uh, taken from some environment variables right uh, because we might want to deploy it into a different uh, environment and instead of changing it and rebuilding we want to take it from the environment variable okay but the challenge is as we discussed previously it is not a single url uh, here fetch bookmarks this is called from a uh, let us see here in bookmarks index page and this gets rendered on this server side. So in this flow, this needs to be bookmarker hyphen API colon 8080. Whereas in this add, so here we are making a call to save bookmark and this is client side rendered page and it is going to uh, call from our host machine. So this needs to be um, localhost 8080 so the same url cannot be used and okay let us figure out how to solve this one so first how do we pass uh, this variable value as an environment variable if you go to next.js documentation there is a runtime configuration section here we can see in next config.js file we can configure environment variables like this so there is server runtime config where you can uh, specify the secrets and this is going to be available only when you are running on the server side and <coughs> there is another public runtime config and these values will be available on both server and client so we can we can assign our environment variables like this and we can use these values in our code how to use these values so if you scroll down here there is a get config uh, function from next config and we can extract this server runtime config and uh, public runtime config and we can access our values here okay so let us do uh, this configuration so here i have server runtime config and public runtime config and during server runtime config i want to take this value right so i am going to take this key and use it here and for public it is going to be called from host machine so i'm going to take this key So basically, we are initializing this server runtime API base URL and public runtime config API base URL with two different values. And this is going to be used uh, uh, by uh, server rendered pages and this URL is going to be used by uh, client side rendered pages. I mean, automatically it doesn't do that. We will uh, take care of how to do this in our API JS file. So here, let us copy this input here. And we can get this. 
get API URL. So here, what we can do, first we can check this dot, without the config we have API base URL or public runtime config dot base URL, API base URL. Why is that? Why can't we directly use uh, server runtime API base URL on this server rendered flows and uh, this one here on the client, client rendered uh, flows? Because we never know from which page these API calls will be made. And this is going to work because when we are calling from uh, server rendered pages, this value will be available and it's going to use this value. When this call is made from a client side rendered page, this value will be empty or undefined and this is going to be available. So it will be used. So in either case, this approach is going to work. So now instead of uh, directly using this, we are going to call get URL. Okay, and we don't need this anymore. Cool. So uh, let us recap once. So in the Docker Compose app file, we have specified two environment variables: server side API base URL, client side API base URL, and server side rend, uh, API base URL is pointed to bookmarker hyphen API 8080 and client side API base URL is pointed to localhost 8080. This is because we mapped our API to 18080 on the localhost. Okay. Now, how are we using these two variables? In our next config.js, we have server runtime config and public runtime config. And we are taking the API base URL from the environment variable. And for this also, we are taking it from environment variables. And finally, we are going to use these values in our API.ts. Unlike earlier where we hard coded the API base URL, now we have imported this get config from next config and then uh, the destructured server runtime config and public runtime config. And then we have created a simple utility uh, function to return API base URL. And here we are checking first whether uh, server runtime config API base URL is present, then it will return. Otherwise, it's going to return public runtime config API base URL. When a function is called from server, server side rendered page, it is going to uh, be available here. Uh, server runtime config API base URL is going to contain its value. Whereas from the client side rendered page, this value will be null or undefined. So it's going to take this one. So in either case, it's going to work fine, okay? Before starting our application, let us print console.log server runtime config. Okay, and also public runtime config in both these functions so that we can see what values are present in which flow. Okay, okay. So, also uh, earlier we have created this simple utility to uh, start only infra or entire application. So, we are going to use the same thing. Now, uh, we also defined our own. Uh, UI also here in Docker Compose app. So here, what we can do? Dot run dot sh start. This is going to build the application and then uh, start both uh, backend API and uh, Next.js UI application in Docker. 
so the application started now here we mapped our ui application to 1300 okay so here yes we have so our application is up and running we can navigate to different pages and we can even search okay and if you go back in the console okay during the server rendering so far we haven't uh, gone to add bookmark page we have uh, been navigating in the uh, listing page which uses server side rendering so here we can see in server runtime config we have this api base url which is configured to bookmarker hyphen api uh, 8080 so this is the flow that happens within uh, docker network a call is being made from this container to this container okay so here we can see both public runtime config contains its value and server runtime contains its value and according to our logic in our api uh, url so it contains a value so it is going to be written now let us go back and go to add bookmark and click on this and enter quarkus okay and let us go to this dev tools console and click on here and here you can see server runtime config is empty and public runtime config is having its value which is nothing but local host uh, url see and accordingly this value is empty so it's going to take this value so this way in both the cases it's going to work just fine okay so we have verified uh, these settings so let us remove these console log statements and also from here so th that's all uh, for this video and we have both backend api and uh, next is ui application running and uh, both are running in docker compose environment finally let us uh, update our github actions to include uh, building the front end ui application as well so here i have just added uh, this additional job earlier we have a job to build the backend api now i have added a another job to build the ui application so it is kind of a very similar we are uh, making the working directory as the bookmarker ui next.js folder and then uh, we are checking out the code and then we are using setup node uh, to configure node.js environment and also we are specifying as we are going to use an uh, build tool we are specifying uh, to use cache based on the yarn uh, configuration and then we are uh, installing the dependencies and then uh, building the application uh, production build and if it is a master or main branch we are building the image and then pushing it to docker hub so um, so now when we push this change whenever we make any code change it's going to build uh, it's going to run two jobs one is for backend api another one is for uh, ui application so i think we are good with both backend and frontend uh, api implementations so next we are going to look at how to run these applications on kubernetes okay thanks for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming videos bye bye